Okay, so welcome to this next video on uh, vancomycin resistance in uh, Enterococcus faecalis. Okay, so what we want to now see is um, how uh, these the, tran the expression of these four proteins, VAN-H, VAN-A, VAN-X, and VAN-Y, is going to actually help us resist the effects of vancomycin, or how it's going to help the bacterium Enterococcus faecalis resist the effects of the, um, the vancomycin. So let's just go over the page and remind ourselves of how vancomycin was working. It bound to these two D-alanine groups right at the end of the uh, N-acetyl muramyl pentapeptide. The trick, the trick that Enterococcus faecalis plays on us is to replace this final amino acid, D-alanine, with something different. It replaces it with D-lactate, basically. And when it replaces that final D-alanine with D-lactate, as you'll see, that is still capable of forging um, crosslinks with these amino groups of the L-lysine or the diaminopimetic acid. So the bacterium is still capable of uh, making crosslinks between its peptidoglycan strands. And vancomycin's binding affinity to this D-alanine and now D-lactate is hugely reduced. So it just doesn't like binding to it anymore. And therefore, you end up with massive great vancomycin resistance. I think the affinity is reduced by about a thousand fold. So uh, the effectiveness of vancomycin at stopping cross-link formation uh, at any given concentration is going to be reduced by a thousand times. So it's a massive blow, basically. Okay, so we want to see how these four enzymes that we've created are going to actually help us replace um, this final dialanine with this D-lactate instead. So, let's begin with VAN-H. So, VAN-H is actually a lactate dehydrogenase enzyme. So, it's the enzyme that's going to make lactate, basically. So, lactate dehydrogenase. Okay, so I'll get another piece of paper for showing this chemical reaction, because otherwise it'll be a bit squashed down here. Okay, so throw that over there. Right, so um, basically VAN-H is going to catalyze the production of uh, lactic acid, or lactate, from pyruvic acid. So let me just remind you of the structure of pyruvate. And this is a, so, such a simple molecule. So here is the structure of pyruvate, which is the product of glycolysis. So the first stage of respiration. So this is pyruvic acid here. Or um, if you wanted to make it, draw it as pyruvate, then you take off this proton. So pyruvic acid is the molecule with the proton. Pyruvate is the molecule without this proton. Now, basically what you can do is you can convert this to lactate um, here uh, by um, adding hydrogen onto this oxygen here and this carbon here. So I'll show you what you do. You cleave one of those bonds that makes up that double bond between the oxygen and the carbon, and you bind on two hydrogens instead. So this is the structure that you make instead. So this is the structure of lactate, basically, or lactic acid. And it should be lactic acid because it's, I've drawn it with the proton on. Again, lactate would be the molecule without this proton here on the carboxylic acid group. And uh, in order to do this reaction, what has to happen is you have to convert, um, uh, you have to get these protons from somewhere. And basically, the way that you uh, source these protons is through a molecule of reduced uh, NAD, so a reduced nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide, uh, which is then uh, converted back to oxidized nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. So this is reduced NAD here. Okay, and don't be confused by this notation for reduced NAD, which suggests that you only have one proton there. Reduced NAD actually has two protons and two electrons associated with those protons, which is why it can provide two protons. So it's a little bit confusing that, you know, you only show it with one proton, basically. But reduced NAD actually has two protons. Okay, so uh, VAN-H is a lactate dehydrogenase enzyme. And the way it's named, basically, is because lactate dehydrogenase originally uh, was for, 
the, originally the way it was named was to catalyze the reaction going in the reverse direction, basically, i.e. dehydrogenating lactate to pyruvic acid. Um, but it actually catalyzes both directions of this reaction, so it can just as easily make lactic acid from pyruvic acid. Okay, so, excuse me. That's what uh, this uh, Van H enzyme is going to do. It's going to convert pyruvic acid, which is a metabolite easily available in the cell, into lactic acid. Okay, so uh, the next thing that uh, we need to look at is how do you synthesize this uh, D-alanine, D-lactate uh, dipeptide that's going to be on the end of your um, on the end of your pentapeptide, basically. So, let me show you the structure of the D-alanine, D-alanine dipeptide, and then we'll see uh, the structure of the D-alanine, D-lactate. So, D-alanine, D-alanine, let's draw the first alanine here. So, it's bonded to the third amino acid above by its amino terminus. So, the third amino acid will be up here, basically, so I won't draw that in, uh, but I'll just draw the bond going to it. Here's the alpha carbon. And then the R group in alanine is a methyl group. Then you have the carboxyl group, which is linked by an amide bond to the next um, alanine molecule. So here's the alpha uh, carbon of the next alanine, the um, R group of the next alanine, the hydrogen of that alanine, and then the carboxyl group right at the end. Okay, and this is this final carboxyl group, which binds with the um, L-lysine or the diaminopimenic acid amino group, basically, to form those crosslinks. Okay, so what I've drawn, basically, is this final structure here, and the bond that I've left up there is where it would attach to that third amino acid, L-lysine or diaminopimenic acid. Okay, now let's draw um, pyruvic, well, let's draw um, this first dialanine is going to remain the same, but what instead we want is we want it now bonded to lactic acid instead of um, instead of another alanine. Okay, so um, what we're going to do is we're going to put this group on in exactly the same place. Here's the alpha carbon. Here's the R group of the first al the alanine. Here's the carboxyl group of that first alanine, and here's the oh sorry. I got a bit carried away. No, no. We're going to now link this first alanine group to uh, the lactate rather than to um, another dialanine. And the way we're going to link it is basically here's a carboxyl group off here. Okay, so here's the um, carboxyl group of this um, dialanine here. And we're going to um, basically make an ester link between this carboxyl group of this dialanine and this hydroxyl group of the lactate molecule. So, what that will involve is making an oxygen, having an oxygen here, and then you'll have this carbon of the lactic acid here, uh, and then you'll have a methyl group going off the side, a hydrogen like so, and then it will end with a carboxyl group. Okay. So it will kind of be just like, as you can see, it is just like uh, the dialanine, dialanine molecule, except that where you used to have this amino group here, or this uh, amide link here, you've now just got an ester link instead of an amide link. And that change means that the, um, means that the uh, vancomycin can no longer bind. Okay, right. So the next enzyme... Uh, that we transcribed. We made these um, four enzymes, remember. Van H, we've seen what that does. It makes, um, la it makes lactic acid from pyruvate. Now let's see what Van A does. Van A, basically, is what we might call a ligase. Okay? It takes lactic acid and it's going to bind it with dialanine. So it's going to take dialanine and it's going to bind the lactic acid with the dialanine. So it's basically going to add on the, D, uh, the lactic acid to the dialanine, basically, of the uh, Miramal um, tetrapeptide. So if I take this you back to this structure here, if we were to take off this final dialanine, and I'm going to show you exactly how we can take off that final dialanine, if we were to take off that dialanine, 
then we'd be able to bind delactate to it basically and that's what van um, that's what van a is going to do basically okay uh, so um, what we uh, so that's what van a does it adds this um, this lactate um, group uh, onto uh, the um, N acetyl muramyl tetrapeptide because the D, the final 50 alanine has to have been removed, therefore it won't be a pentapeptide anymore, it'll be a tetrapeptide. Okay, so that's what uh, Van um, A does. Okay, right, now we need to talk about how you remove um, that uh, final D alanine group uh, from. Um, the um, N-acetylmuramyl pentapeptide. And basically, the uh, enzyme that does that is this VAN-Y enzyme. So this is what's known as a carboxypeptidase. Carboxypeptidase. Because it chops off the uh, terminal amino acid uh, at the carboxyl end of a polypeptide, basically. So if we look at this, this is the carboxyl end of a polypeptide. And what it's going to do is it's going to chop off that terminal amino acid. So VAN-Y is a carboxypeptidase. It will chop off that terminal dialanine. And then you're ready and set for VAN-A, basically, to add on the uh, D-lactate. And I should have said that, actually. Uh, the enantiomer of lactic acid that you are using is D-lactate, or D-lactic acid. Okay, uh, so again, this is a chiral carbon. It has uh, four different groups coming off it. So th there are two uh, enantiomers of this molecule, and the enantiomer you're using is the uh, dextrorotatory enantiomer. Okay, uh, so you add on that D lactate to that final position uh, using Van A, and you cleave off that final D alanine using Van Y. So finally, all we need to know is what does this Van, van X do? Well, basically, it's a dipeptidase, and uh, its role is to cleave dialanine, dialanyl, uh, well, sorry, dialanyl, dialanine uh, molecules. So, if you remember when you were synthesizing the n acetyl muramyl pentapeptide, uh, you had to first create dialanyl, dialanine groups. Uh, in order to add them on, basically, to the N-acetylmuramyl tripeptide. So, basically, what Van X does is it breaks these dialanyl dialanine groups down before they can be added on to the N-acetylmuramyl uh, tripeptide, and therefore stops you from making uh, the normal N-acetylmuramyl pentapeptide with the dialanine, dialanine um, terminus on it, basically. So all of these enzymes are tr there to try and um, to try and favour the production of N-acetylmuramyl pentapeptides, where at the end, instead of having dialanine, dialanine, instead you have dialanine, delactate. And when you have that dialanine delactate, you can still form crosslinks between different n acetylmuramyl pentapeptide groups because you've still got that carboxyl group uh, here, which can form an uh, amide link with the amino group of the l lysine or the diaminopimetic acid. And therefore, you can still form crosslinks, uh, but the uh, vancomycin drug cannot bind to this uh, dialanine delactate uh, when it's... Um, there instead of the dialanine, dialanine. Well, it can bind, but the binding affinity is around a thousand times less.